Hello all, GC13 here. Alpha 14 for Prison Architect has been released, so that means it's time for a brand new tutorial. I hope all of you guys are excited because it has two very big features. One, guard dogs that we've all been asking for for a long time, even before we had to worry about contraband and escape tunnels, which they will both, which they will be very helpful with. Also, when they say they can chase down fleeing prisoners, they're not kidding. Maybe we'll have an escape attempt or two where you'll be able to see that. I, of course, as always, am going to endeavor not to have any escape attempts, but uh, the game can be tricky, so we'll see how I do there. The second huge feature is you can now sell your prison, and that'll carry the full valuation over in starting money for your next prison which basically means once you've built one profitable prison, you never really have to worry too much about workshops again. Rather than a workshop being vital towards actually creating a reasonably sized prison in any reasonable amount of time, the workshop is now for supplemental income. That's after you've built the first prison though. Since this is a tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and go with the workshop so I can show you how to get your first prison off of the ground. There are also a bunch of other features that'll be best shown once we're actually into the game. So let's go to create new prison. I could go with the large prison here because one of the smaller, one of the other features is an optimization of the behavior. So larger prisons will behave at a better frame rate, but I like the way a medium sized map works. We're going to go with that. Fog of War is still broken. I can, dis I can try to disable it here, but it will still be enabled by default. That's just an easy fix in your save file. I will put in an annotation showing you how to fix that. And we will get into the game. Let's see, one of the, one of the less fun features is I now have to look here and check the entire road for trees. It doesn't always happen, but often it will happen that down here you will have a tree that will stop your supply trucks from leaving. Now, if they're up here, they can just go through the trees no problem, but the ones at the end of the road will prevent them from leaving and cause a backup, and you won't get deliveries until you go to dump the tree. So, just you would click on the tree and you would go to either dismantle or dump. You can dump it freely because the trees are free to put down anyway. You see they have no cost. It is much like fen fencing. Let's see, one of, the, one of the cool new features is I zoom in on my workmen and you can see that there are many models for them, not just one. That's the same for all of your staff. There are brand new models for your guards, there are several models for your cooks, for your janitors, probably for your gardeners too. This is actually going to be an outdoor prison, so we're finally going to get to see the gardeners. Um, uh, obviously, if you go over and look here, certain things need to be indoors, like your cell, your kitchen, your canteen, but there are a few things that we can put outside, and, you know, rather than paving the space in between the rooms, we're just going to have wide open spaces this time. So, let's let all my stuff get delivered, and we will plan out, actually, no, we won't plan, we won't plan yet, we will go to the grants report. This is very important. We're going to accept the top two grants here, Basic Detention Center and Administration Center, because those are the first two things we want to do. Um, I could accept these other two grants right here. That would be no problem. I like to keep this money in reserve, so I know I'll have it to build what I need, need to build with it. Now we're going to go to planning, and the first thing you see is there are brand new features here. Pathways I don't see much of a use for. This is just saying, hey, I would like to put some concrete tiles here, or I prefer paving stone. Objects is more interesting. This is like, this is going to be my work desk, my chair, and my filing cabinet. That's helpful. Uh, before you had to do that with walls, it was kind of ugly. So, so let me just lay down my, my administrative building. I'm not going to get too fancy. This is just going to be an 8 by 26 building. And this will be an access hallway so the janitor can get into clean. And we're just going to divvy it up into five 4x4 four four offices. And that's one office for each of our main staff members. We'll want to get a, where is he, warden. I'm going to hire him as soon as we have an office for him. And then he will very quickly unlock our accountant who will allow us to get a full staff before we get all any of our prisoners here. If you don't hire the accountant pretty quickly, 
then you'll have to wait to get a full staff. So we're going to hire her first, after we get the warden, of course. And then chief, then foreman, and then finally last, but definitely not least, will be our psychologist. So let's get our workmen to work. We just go to the foundations button over here and choose that we want to lay down a building. And we highlight the area we want them to lay down. They will put walls around the perimeter. And it's, as you can see, it requires an entrance. I choose a staff door to be my entrance. Uh, putting, the step, putting the door anywhere except on one of the corners, so putting it here wouldn't work because then it would open into a wall. Same for this square, this square, or this square, but any other perimeter square and it will function to allow people in. Unless I were to like say put it here and then put the wall down, then they would try to be entering into a wall and that wouldn't make any, that wouldn't work out for them very well, would it? And it pops in. So usually when I make my office complex, I will not put in the walls. I'll, I'll just leave my, leave my administrators to fend for themselves. I am very consciously not doing that this time. I'm going to completely finish this place before I get to anything else. So each office needs a office desk, a filing cabinet, and a chair. So we're just pop, popping that all in. They're very, very small expenses. And I need to see where I'm going to leave the door. Also, unlike what I normally do, I'm going to not quibble on who gets what office. I'm just going to mark them all as offices and get my guys in there. And you can see I can just put down the warden. It doesn't matter what office I tell him. He wants the northmost office. And that's the behavior all of your people are going to follow. So we're going to get him researching finance because, again, I want the accountant first. And that does look like a fully staffed office, so you can see it is, or a fully stocked office, so you can see that is, that bar is slowly filling up. If I put him in an office without one of his things, it, that time wouldn't be going. You'd have to wait until you got all of your equipment in. So we're just going to give them walls really quickly on the other side. I'll wait a moment to put in the doors because I do want to get in my utilities. Get that put in there really quick. And we're also, we'll also put down our free capacitor. Put that there, actually. You can put down a capacitor on any of the squares bordering the power station, and it'll work just fine. I put it there just so I can run this cable straight down. I like to run cables through walls because the smaller cables that come out to power the lights don't like to, they can't go through walls, so. Rather than forcing them through this tiny opening, I just put them straight into the wall. And let me explain the behavior on the power station here. You see, you saw how it was one big green bar, and then as soon as the capacitor came online, it was two green bars. The, the red part of your power bar, power bar represents how much power you are using. The green part represents how much you have extra. And for every power source, you have a divider, which basically means it'll shrink the red bar because your total available power grows. So like if I were to switch this off, you'll see I only have one bar and I'm using half a bar worth of power. Now as soon as I switch the capacitor to on, I have to unpause it for that to work, you'll see I am using half of one bar but I have two bars now. And the water pump station, you see, requires direct power, but I put it to the left of the power station, and it has its own, they both spawn with power cables. So as long as I put them within one square of each other, left or right, it'll be fine. I wanted to put the power station here because, or the water station here, so I can run my pipe a bit later. And again, I promised that I would finish my administrative center before I did anything else, so we're just gonna put in these doors. You did see that I can now mark objects like this. Um, I will be using that in the kitchen and in the canteen. And one minor feature that 
is going to make it a lot less frustrating to make a prison for some people is the ability to move deliveries and garbage away from the street. It used to be if your delivery and delivery and garbage zones did not touch these t concrete tiles adjacent to the road, your supply trucks and garbage trucks would just keep driving straight on. Now I could move this and put it inside a secure area. Um, I will not because of the behavior of prisoners with that, but it is an option if you if you want to have your if you want to have the ability for your workmen to work during the day. However, since I'm fine with them being on sheet metal detail, as you will see once we get the once we get started with our workshop, um, it's fine. Let's see, I'm I'm just doing a check here to make sure there's nobody caught on any of the walls here. They did mess with the pathfinding, and so they will get stuck. You see, this guy's stuck. You just have to tell them to move away, and they will unstick themselves just fine. So for my planning. I'm going to keep the deliveries and garbage zones where they are. Um, theoretically, the garbage zone should be able to go north of deliveries now. However, that still doesn't work if the garbage is placed onto a truck that also contains a delivery. So I'm going to leave mine south of the delivery zone. Maybe when Alpha 15 comes out in late November, they'll have that fixed, but they have not fixed it just yet. So I'm just going to lay down a bit of planning. I want to have a guard room here. That's maybe a bit large. Mostly I want the guard room just as a place where the guards are going to hang out. So I'm just going to make it a security room here. And it has to be at least 4x4. Four four. So since I'm also using, I'm going to put visitation up here too. So I just want to make sure that where the visitor table is and that will be plenty of room to fit in two visitor tables that way. So I know I can go with this depth of a room. So we'll say that's gonna be my security room. And this will be, hmm, that would be an awfully, we'll put the infirmary up here too. Hmm, actually we'll make the infirmary smaller to I could be using the objects for this, but old habits die hard, I guess. So that'll be my infirmary. And this is entirely too large for visitation. You really don't need all that much room in visitation. And this will be where my guards hang out. This is something I'm going to put in eventually. This is, this is going to take a while for me to add on to. Let's see here. And I will have... Actually, I'm not even going to plan the fence. I am going to just put the fence right in. And fencing out here. Since this is going to be an outdoor prison, I'm going to be trying to keep everything that can go outside, outside. Obviously I cannot put my cells outside, but we're gonna, we're gonna put stuff like the storage and the workshop outside. The brand new kennel for the, to, so that the canine units can recharge their batteries, so to speak, will also go outside. It actually has to be one square wider than the, than that though, so. Yeah, let's go ahead, we'll, we'll, we'll balance them out. Oops, that's a little too much balance. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just planning for where everybody's going to go. We're going to have the kennel down here. Yeah, keep forgetting I have to do that. So that'll be my kennel, eventually. Which means this area is going to be my storage. Storage is pretty important to have, and I like to keep it near the deliveries area because your workmen will go to hang out in the storage area, and so if you're using them to deliver sheet metal to your workshop rather than having your prisoners do it, then you'll want them near the delivery zone. It, it's no big deal, but 
And we'll go ahead and put a staff door on here because the you can't see it yet, but the prisoners can get all sorts of goodies from the storage room and we want to limit their access to that kind of stuff. Also, we're going to put on a jail door right here that will be something that we lock open. And you may not think that a locked open jail door would be very secure, but unless they've changed the behavior in this alpha, that will be regarded by the prisoners as secure and they will not make a they will not try to make a run for it. So we have future kennel, we have storage, and we have future sites for buildings that we don't have to worry about just yet. Let's worry about something a little bit more immediate in our concern. We need to worry about where's our kitchen going to go. So I want that to be relatively nearby. We're going to put that close to the deliveries area because your guards have your cooks have to go out to the deliveries area to fetch the to fetch food. Your workmen your workmen take it off the truck and the cooks deliver it. And so this will be cooker, cooker. And then we'll just have a wall of fridges here. I think that's a fair sized kitchen and if worst comes to worst we can expand it out one square and uh, we, we have options. So let's just see what we want to do. We have 14 squares available and so I think that means okay Okay, we'll move them back one square, actually. We'll put the, I'm planning where to put the serving tables. We'll put the serving table here. And see, with the canteen this big, that will be big enough for our first 48 prisoners. So we'll go ahead and shrink and put that there. We will just be able to keep expanding it this way. We also have room to expand it south if we also need more kitchen room. So again, we're, we're, keeping, we're keeping room for expansion, but you do not want to overbuild. We, you saw that we got a fair amount of money from accepting those two grants, and we have a bit more money on the table here, another $50,000, but this money has to last us until we get a workshop going. And I think I want a workshop somewhere up here. So that money has to last, so do not overbuild. And we'll go ahead and order our workmen to get that taken care of. We need to think where do we want them to put the staff door, and we gonna, we're going to put the staff door right there. This will be where the cooks can go out and get to deliveries quickly. And we also want a large jail door here so that we can lock that open, but it's just a large doorway that our prisoners can use to get into the canteen. And I see we're about to have a new staff member. So I'm just gonna, again, it doesn't matter where I put her, she's claimed that office and she's gonna go for it. So we're gonna start working on the security chief. They changed his name, he used to just be the chief. Or no, he's still probably the chief. Yes, he is the chief. So we're still researching our chief because he's he has a lot to do now. First thing we're going to have to do with him is deployment, but then I want to get to the dogs. But then we still also have to research contraband and prison policies, so he's going to be researching for a little bit. So he's going to be our first real guy we get. Now, I forgot to hire my additional workmen, so I'm going to hire them right now. Three additional workmen, which would have been all I could have hired right from the start and still been able to hire that accountant and keep going. I could hire as many workmen as I wanted now because now that I have a now that I have an accountant, I can go over my daily cash flow. So in fact I'll hire one more. I now have a twelfth workman. I could have not I could not have had this set up before. If I had hired twelve if I had hired four additional workmen, so I had twelve and then had tried to hire my accountant, it would have said that I cannot exceed my daily cash flow and then I would have been stuck. So that's why you should always hire your accountant first after your warden and you should not hire more than three additional workmen until you have your accountant. Then go crazy. 
And we're just going to put in a dividing wall here and a staff door because this is going to be staff only. We're going to mark this as a canteen and then we'll start putting in the requisite items and this as a kitchen and the same. So cooker. I'm rotating it three times because you can see, you can barely see the place. This is the side that the cooks will cook from. They will actually cook in the wall. It's, it's no problem. It just looks silly. And we're going to put in two fridges because they always have too many ingredients. And before we actually get any food, we're going to change the variety to low. I haven't seen any changes from that. We'll see if this alpha has made the meal variety matter a little bit. Don't know. And finally, we'll put in enough seating for our first 16 prisoners. Two tables and two benches per table. And now we have to worry about our utilities. Oh. Okay, there. That'll fix that. I, 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 I tried to cheat the system, didn't work out. I tried to save the, uh, how much is it, 10 bucks on the, I tried to save 10 bucks on the electrical cable and it didn't work out. Woe is me. So we'll just let them run the cable. And as you can see, that's taking them quite some time. Now, not every, not every single prison that you build is going to be finished in the first 24 hour period you get. If at any point you think that you can't take care of it, you just come up here to the prisoner's report and you would just clo click on the green square that says open, make it a red square that says closed, and you see your prison is now closed to new inmates. I'm willing to bet that I'll be able to be done in time. So I'm going to live dangerously and I'm going to accept eight high risk inmates when the in 13 and a half hours. Now I do not recommend starting with high risk inmates. That will make my first couple days very interesting as the prisoners come in with unfulfilled needs. And in fact I'm going to mess with the regime right now to account for that fact. I know that they will come in very tired so I want them to get to sleep pretty early. Uh, I know they also come in hungry, so we're going to put, give them food right before bed, and we'll also give them food pretty early in the day. But other than that, they're all going to be on free time, and I will wake them, actually wake them up with a shower right then. I want them all on free time because they're going to have TVs and phone booths so they can work down their other needs. And they will just do whatever they get, whatever they want to do during free time. As long as they're not making trouble, it's fine. And we'll put in a sink to finish up the kitchen, and it will need direct water. Um, we'll go ahead and run. Um, I should figure out where I want my large pipe to go. Which means figuring out exactly where I want to put the cell blocks. Um, in this plan, I'm going to run the cell blocks in the central area of the prison here. And you see why I didn't go to a large map? I have all this area to the south that I'm not using. I mean, I have plenty of room to expand south if I really wanted to, but probably what I should have done is moved everything south a bit, but I'm going to have plenty of room. It's not going to be a problem. So we'll just give some room here for walking. And let's see. I like to have 16 prisoner cell blocks. So we'll just run eight cells up the side. I might go a little bit more in this design. Oops. Don't know why I keep doing that. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this would be a 20 prisoner cell block and would probably give us enough room. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and have 20 prisoners in here. And we will just mirror this over here. 
Mm. Yeah, we want that on the south side. Um, in Alpha 14, they did cut down on the amount of tunneling your prisoners will do. Now they need a particular trait before they'll tunnel, and only 10 to 20% of your prisoners will probably have that trait. And before you ask, no, you can't see who has the trait, at least not without opening your save file and looking. It's the clever trait you're looking for, if you do look. And so that should really cut down on the amount of tunnels you see. However, even, even in Alpha 13, when they started out as gophers when they first got to your prison, just tunneling like crazy, you shouldn't have too much trouble with the tunneling. They, they, they should be fairly restrained. And this is just, this is eventually going to be a shower. Actually, I'm going to cut it down to two. This is eventually going to be where the shower is, and there will be uh, just another cell block, and we'll just have 40 guys crammed into this shower space. I'm not sure how wise that is, but it'll be a lot easier for us to patrol with our guards. Uh, that, that might lead to some tension in the morning, so we'll see how smart this turns out to be. I mean, every, every new prison you make is going to be a learning process, so you gotta just got to accept the good with the bad. So we'll put down the foundations for this massive cell block. We're not going to finish. We're not gonna. We're not gonna finish this right away. This is gonna take some time. However, I have decided where to. What I'm gonna do with my. Or where exactly I need my large pipes to go. It's gonna be nice and easy. And then all I will do is I'll just run small pipes down this way and I checked and it was 31 meters and the water in a small pipe will keep up for 39 so I might actually be able to make this all the way let's see 40 meters okay so I have to take the large pipe out one square 39 meters and we'll just Pop a large pipe out there. That was the bureaucracy building. So we're going to start working on maintenance, and as soon as I lay down my chief, I'm going to want him researching deployment. And I should get in the entrance to this foundation too. That would be that would be helpful. You know what, since I've already started on the cell block, I might as well go ahead and accept the grant for that. That'll be 20,000 more in my pocket. And let's go here. We're going to put in the shower here. That'll get taken care of. We should put in a yard. Hmm. I, I had been initially planning on putting the yard up here. However, since I started so north, I think I'm going to put the yard down here. Uh, it's just going to be put there under the understanding that it is a temporary yard that we will have to move later. And we're just going to fence everything in right now. And this fence will act, the fences are free, they, they don't cost you anything but your workman's time, but they do cost quite a bit of time. You saw how large that is. It's a, it's a good thing I hired the four additional workmen. That will allow me to get stuff done a bit quicker. And I'm just going to lock these jail doors open. I often forget, and so that can lead to difficulties. So I just want to do that while I'm thinking about it. And as soon as, since I'm doing so well on my prison construction, as soon as midnight rolls around, I will go ahead and hire my two cooks and my two guards. I could hire them now, but then that would just be 400 extra dollars I have to pay for their wages while they have no prisoners to look after. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna wait. And said I, I want the I want them to focus on getting that taken care of right now. And actually, I'm just looking here. I 
we're gonna we're gonna put this in quicker than I thought. This is going to be a holding cell, and I'm going to keep the holding cell there. That's gonna be a it's gonna be a permanent fixture, and it'll be there just so we have some overflow on our prison. You know, we can handle having a couple extra prisoners because it's very erratic. For the first few days, you'll have prisoners arrive in batches of eight, and you should be able to keep up with that. However, since this is a medium map, eventually it'll start fluctuating. Anywhere between 8 and 24 prisoners will come in in one day. And sometimes I might only have three extra cells and I don't have the space or the money to put in anymore. And so if, I, if they say they want to send me 8, I want to accept that because the next day they might want to send me 16. So I'll, I can just accept the 8, 3 will go into cells, 5 will go into the holding cell, I can put beds in the holding cell so they can sleep in it if uh, worst case scenario pans out. And let's see, we're going to want patrols next, so I can show you the dogs in the next video. And as soon as I lay the maintenance man down, I want him researching prison labor. Probably should work on cleaning first actually, but we're going we're gonna to do prison labor. So, what did I need to lay down a foreman? Oops. And don't know why, but I didn't tell my warden to work on the psychologist, who is maybe the last staff member we researched, but he is certainly not the least. Now, I'm watching here. My workmen are just about to finish the fence. I'm going to watch this failed sign on the yard. It may take a while for it to realize that the yard is secure now, but if I come back and that isn't doesn't say it's secure later, I'm going to want to look around and see what's wrong because I might have messed up my fence. There might be a square missing. Let's see, so we're just going to put a jail door here for the holding cell. And then we'll go ahead and put a staff door here. We're going to, this will be visitation and infirmary. Okay, and it's, it does say that the yard is secure, so that's good. That means there, is, there cannot be any holes in my fence. Again, this is, this is locked open, but it's a barrier, and if I see any prisoner making a break for it, I'm going to want to manually set it to door locked shut and not use the lockdown, because if they have keys, they can still unlock a door that's in lockdown. Your guards have that power, they just choose not to use it for some reason, I guess because it wouldn't be fair. But if you lock the door shut, nobody has the power to open the door except for you. And so you can stop a escaping prisoner right in his tracks by using that function. We decided this is going to be a holding cell. It doesn't require much, just a single toilet and a single bench. And again, this, this this probably will not be used very much. But it is there just in case we need it. And I'm very proud of my workmen. They haven't really been getting caught on any edges. Um, that That is something to watch out for. Now that they've messed with the pathfinding a little bit. If, if you just see if you see a workman who can't seem to get away from a wall, all you would do is select the workman and order them to move somewhere and they would be just fine after that. Anyway, midnight passed some time ago, so two guards and two cooks, and we're gonna zoom in so we can see some of the new models. Oh, we didn't get new models this time. Uh, we got two of the old guys. That's statistically unlikely, actually. Uh, we'll, we'll see as we get We'll see the, some of the new models as we got. Here's one of the new guard models. We didn't have females before. And we're gonna lock this door, jail door open. For the most part, I keep my jail doors locked open. It is mostly just a waste of your guard's time to have to open the jail doors for staff members and prisoners. If you, eventually I'm going to expand this to south. But if you really, the, they're only there so I have the option to shut them. Not so they can be shut all the time. And I see even without hooking up a lot of this stuff to power, I'm running low on available power. So we're going to get some cables. Ooh, should have run this one over. 
Anyway, we're going to start work on these cells now since them and the shower are the last two things to worry about. So we're gonna we're gonna stock them on this side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're only gonna again, we're only building what we need. Nothing more. We've got to make that money last until we have a workshop. Once we have a workshop, we can spend like crazy. Not before. See again. That'll be just 30 squares. You see this 39 squares is delivering water just fine. You see that water icon isn't flashing. That means it is receiving everything it needs just fine. And it's probably a good thing we have that holding cell. I'm not sure if we, will, if we will be able to have everything done in time for those prisoners to get here. I have not even laid down a common room, so that means I'm going to have to be a little bit tricky. Because I definitely do want them to have... I definitely do want them to have that stuff available to them. However, you see the yard right here is sitting, and they will go to exercise, but they can also do anything else in here. So I'm going to give them phone booths and televisions here. And one change that was not in the change log, but I think a lot of us quickly saw, is that televisions that are placed outside will now require direct power. So I have to actually run an electrical cable straight on top of them for them to, for them to work. And they, they will not have that powered before they have these TVs installed, so you'll be able to see the, that it is flashing now. Again, the prisoners can still use stuff, even if it's not receiving the power or water it's supposed to have. It, it has, they, it functions properly. Um, I assume that that's going to get fixed one patch or another. It's really more of a bug fixing kind of thing. It's, it's not something I worry about, just, I don't, you don't want to get used to it because if you only know how to play the game when exploiting bugs, then once it's finished, you're going to have a tough time. So let's finish these up as well. And once I have once I have my prisoners in the cells, I think I'm going to end this video. This has just been day one. Of course, I'm going to update a couple times a week two or three times a week to uh, two missing links and then these guys will have their power. And the TVs have power now. Everybody's happy. Hmm. Interesting. That seems to be new behavior. The cook's actually unloading the trucks. Anyway, how long do we have until it's time to eat? We have a couple hours. Okay, so... Oops, see, we have somebody who wants in or out. I'm going to go ahead and hire an, an additional... No, we'll hire two additional guards. Just so we can get these guys taken care of that much more quickly and so I don't have to hire them tomorrow. The first couple days of your prison are going to be the most tense because... Let's see, I haven't hired him, but as soon as I do... Since I've hired my psychologist, we can look at our needs report and see that, again, these guys came with some pretty hefty needs. They need showers, so I'm going to want to get that taken care of very quickly. They want to talk on these telephones to their family. Um, recreation's fine, those TVs weren't a huge priority, but again, they're tired and hungry. So we're also going to order the workmen to put in some showers. And I guess in the next video you'll be able to see the prisoners happily using them, but this is something I definitely don't want to forget to do, so we're going to lay that down right now. And this. And again, see I just take it down 30 squares, it still gets water pressure even down here. You can see it moving through the pipe just fine. 39 squares is the limit on your, on your pipes, so use it. Big pipes will go forever, but small pipes, only 39. 
and uh, they, they should actually start using, see, they're going to use these showers, and you'll see he's getting quite clean, even without water being delivered to that shower head. And that is a bug, or just a feature not yet implemented. And we're going to stop all of their happy fun by putting them in a shackle so that they can be taken to their cells. But now's a good time to do it because the danger level is low, because they've got a lot of their needs taken care of already. They'll have plenty of time to use the phone booth. And they will be able to get all... Ah, one thing I do like is they'll actually start moving towards what they need to have done as soon as a... You saw, as soon as that escort prisoner to cell turned from yellow to green, he started moving. I think that's interesting. But yeah, well, they'll have plenty of time to do everything they need, and we will cover that in our next video, which will be, let's see, definitely by Monday. I hope you guys have fun with the brand new alpha, though. I know I am. Uh, we'll finally get to see the dogs. Started the research. Started the research on canine units, so that'll be one of the first things we put in in our next video, I promise. Until then, I've been GC13. Happy building!